Yes, yeah, so, so welcome to the Silly's Garden, folks. Today we're looking at a raised bed that I'm going to replant now because these have all done their dash. We're looking at rubber and some wombok here, uh, which is uh, finished. It's going to flower. I can let it flower and set seed and drop it down and germinate again, but I'm not so interested in doing that in this bed here. It's good to do it actually if you've got some heirloom varieties. Allow them to go to seed, collect the seed, and then germinate them for the following season or year, and that way you never run out. So it's just a handful of seeds, cost you nothing, just a bit of time and love. Now this bed here was planted a few months ago, obviously, and what we did in the past, and for those who haven't seen me do this before, we normally start off with some straw, a bale of straw at the bottom, about two thirds of the way up, compressed bale so we don't break it up and loosen it up, we want it compressed. Then we add some uh, compost and planting mix. You can add cocoa in between if you like. It's a great sponge, it absorbs moisture, keeps aeration in the soil as well. Uh, or otherwise just go straight out with the compost and the planting mix. And our planting mix, you all know about that by now. And on top of that, we've added our bead straw. And that was up here. When we finished planting it, it was up to the surface. You can see how far down it's compressed. And that's purely because we got the bale underneath decomposing and I guarantee you there'd be a heap of worms in there somewhere and we're going to check it out now. And before we start, just a couple of uh, things in the way I practice my gardening nowadays and it's really good for the back because I don't have to hold onto a pitchfork, garden fork or shovel or mattock. It's a no dig environment and it's been hard for me to reset my mindset uh, as far as doing that. And we've gone through, I suppose, we've done a lot of workshops on this, but we've gone through the details of why we don't dig. And that's so we don't disturb the microbial life in the soil because it's populating, it's networking. And every time you dig it, yeah, you're aerating it, but you're breaking down that network connection that exists below the soil. And on top of that, when you take your plants out, you don't have to remove them completely. And what I mean by that is you can actually cut them straight to the base. For example, this rape plant, I hope my, my Stanley knife or my pocket knife is sharp enough. It is, sort of. Just cut it just below the surface, like this. It's pretty tough. Discard that. Well, that's going to the chooks, because nothing goes to waste here. Or you can compost it. And see that there? This is what we've got left. That's the root ball below there. Now we leave that in there because that becomes a food source for the life in the soil. And if you take it out, you're disconnecting all the, all the, all the microbes, you're disturbing them. If it's a noxious weed, obviously you can dig. It's not a, a rule where if you start digging your garden and pulling weeds out, you've destroyed your garden's life. It's a case where you can do. If you can't, then rip it out and start again. So what we're gonna do here is basically cut them all to the base. The old leaves, folks, well, these are gonna go to the chooks and all the good leaves, even though it's bolted. This is going to the kitchen. Do a bit of a stir fry. Before we go into the next stage, let's have a look and see what's going on underneath here. It's nice, it's rich, but we don't see any worms in this bed here. Well, we're just gonna keep working at this one. We've got some composting creatures, that's for sure. Yeah, look down below, there's the straw underneath. See that? There it is. That's all the straw, it's starting to decay. Actually, this bed is a little bit dry compared to the other ones that I've got. And I've shown you the one next door. Let's go there quickly and I'll show you what I mean. This is the one we've shown you a few times. I haven't been watering that bed because I was just allowing it to finish off. This one here, look at this. I haven't even dug it yet. It's all these worms, all the composting worms everywhere. There's literally hundreds in here, in this little cluster. Can you see that? See them? They're doing a magnificent job to this bed here. Look, look at that. They're just constantly digging. Now they're breaking all this down is the way we wanted to. And I dare say that that bed there has just been running a little bit dry. So we just got to monitor those. And that's the thing about gardening, folks. You just don't know by looking at it, especially when you've got mulch on top. It's always important to Get your hands in there or get a spade or a trail and dig up a little bit and see how moist it is underneath and see if it's activating. So that bed there, what we're going to do now, look, at the end of the day, we had a great crop come out of that. We harvested plenty and now it's time to replenish it. Keep in mind, folks, I'm still investigating here. 
Keep in mind that I haven't been adding worms to any of my garden beds, only the activated mulch, which I leave to sit there to rest and age. And as it starts to decompose, sitting on the ground, worms start to appear in there and they start to populate and then we end up putting that mulch into the garden bed. So I'm not sure what the mulch was like under here when we first applied it, whether it was fresh, I just can't remember. But give it time, this will start to break down and I'm sure we'll start to see worms appearing in this bed as well. So what we've got to do with this bed now is just fill it up. There's no digging. I've done, done a little bit of digging just to, to investigate. But all we do now is basically layer it. And what I'm going to layer this bed with is our planting mix. I'm leaving the mulch underneath because we're layering it, folks. This here is basically seven different blends of organic matter that we brought together. All you've got to do is spread it in your garden. So I've just added five bags of planting mix. This is just over one square metre, folks. And I want to get it up to about, you know, at least 150 mil above from where it was as a new planting ground. But remember, there's only a, a small layer of mulch in between there before it hits the planting mix underneath there. This is just some of the cocoa fibre that needs to be broken down. So if you see a couple of chunky bits like that, just tear them up. They go through a mill, but sometimes a few sneak through. No harm at all. And if you get this, where is it? Here it is. This one here. That's the gold. That's the gold nugget, basically. Black gold, as they call this. This is the uh, beautiful compost that we have, and that is just full of good life. So plenty of that in the garden bed. Not going to hurt it at all. That's what you want. All right, so before we go to the next stage, which is the mulch, we need to hydrate this. Don't do the mistake of applying your mulch over the top without hydrating your mix, no matter what sort of mix you use. Here's a lesson, folks. I think I've run at least about 10 or 15 litres here so far of this one square metre, let's call it that. And let's see, see how well it soaks through. Let's see how far down it's gotten. Look at that. It's only gone that thick. What's that, 10, 12 mil, half an inch? That's as far down as it's gone. So 10, 12 litres or 15 litres in one square metre is definitely not enough water to hydrate the entire area. And you want this to soak through and go right down to the layer below. Otherwise, if it dehydrates, it doesn't activate. Without water, there's no life. And the mulch plays a vital role to that in keeping the hydration in the ground. But you've got to get the hydration in the ground before you put the mulch. Giving it enough water now, let's get the mulch. This is my bean straw, and for those who've been trying to get some, well, it's back online, folks, it's available. And what I'm doing here is activating it with EK Butch and Liquid Gold. Now, you can use your favorite liquid fertilizer. Mine's EK Butch and Liquid Gold. And I add it here with water and just soak it through before we spread it out on the garden bed. Oh, yeah. Oh, this smells good. <laughs> this has been fermenting. Now, when we spread a layer here, it doesn't have to be super thick. Two inches, 50 mil. Maybe three maximum. You don't want it any more than that, because it really does. It's working. It's it's counterproductive. It actually won't allow moisture to get through. Because if you forget to water your garden bed in any particular day, especially on a hot day, and your mulch dries out completely, you're going to make the big effort to try and hydrate it again. So you've got to, you know, three inches. You know, 75 mils plenty. So just. Don't put more, that's all I can say. You put too much, you'll actually suffocate the plants because it gets too thick. There we go. Nice layer, not quite to the top, but that's okay. And all you gotta do now is pick your favorite seedlings. Now remember, it's not just the one variety. No tomatoes, just tomatoes, or just cucumbers. Put a tomato, put a cucumber, put a basil, put a flowering plant, put a spring onion. As a matter of fact, I think I've got some of those now. All right, I've got these from our local garden centre. That's Van Loon's, wonderful garden centre there, folks. I've got some cucumbers, capsicums, carrots. I've got eggplants, radish. My wife wants radish and she wants coriander. So basil, coriander, radish, carrots, 
cucumber and capsicum. All in here. There we go, folks. So have a look at this. We've got cucumbers, coriander, sweet basil, radishes, carrots, and capsicum on the end there. That's nuts. I've lost my mind there. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six capsicums, all in one meter, just over a meter, well, not even. God help us. I'm sure it'll be fine. Now, the idea here is that you do continuous picking as they start to grow, so you're not trying to harvest all at once. I know the capsicums will be the last, or maybe the cucumbers will be, but these will cascade over the side. The coriander will bush up, and we'll be chopping into this in next to no time. And then the basil, the same thing. Picking fresh every day is the best way. Do a little bit of research on understanding the nutritional density of your food from your garden as well. If you're practicing nice, clean, organic um, gardening, you'll have a high nutritional value in your, in your vegetables and herbs that you harvest. But if you harvest them today and consume them two or three days later, that nutrition actually depletes quite quickly, quite rapidly. So it's a waste picking today for three or four days down the track. Harvest every morning or in the afternoon if you need to, to make yourself a fresh salad or whatever you're cooking for tea or lunch. That's the best way to do it. Harvest every day. I can't, can I say that again? Harvest every day. As a matter of fact, I'm about to do that now. These don't really need to be watered because we've given it a good hydration underneath and the mulch itself is also hydrated. You can see how my hands, how wet they were. But if you haven't done that before, you can do it over the top. I don't need to use any liquid fertilizer at this stage. Maybe in about two or three weeks is about it. But if you haven't done it when you're preparing the garden bed or you're planting into an existing garden bed, don't forget to add your biostimulants. So, you know, activate the microbiology in the soil. Sorry, the puppies are coming here and they're coming to say hello. So get your garden organized, folks. So this is how you can do it. Now, this works great on a raised bed and you can still do it on a ground bed. So it doesn't matter where you're planting. You can just top, top layer it with fresh compost or planting mix and straw on top and plant away. Check out our website, facilitiesgarden.com. All these products are available from the nearest stockist and online for Click and Collect, Lethbridge and Dandenong North. From Eva Silly, Maresi.